Uh, good afternoon. Uh, as Bill said, I'd like to thank you for giving us your time today, coming to our virtual open house. Normally, we would have you here on campus, and today happens to be a gorgeous spring day, about 60 degrees and sunny. Uh, so you could really see just how pretty the, the campus is, in addition to all the other information you'd be finding out as we go through uh, today's presentation. The one thing I am gonna talk about is uh, talking about the School of Engineering, Computing and Construction Management. We call it the SECOM. Uh, I've been teaching as part of the computer science program now for uh, about 18 years. And one of the things that you learn as you come to Roger Williams is we have a very enthusiastic student body. The students come in, they're very eager to learn and they're met by a faculty who are all uh, full-time teachers. That's our job. Uh, we pride ourselves in teaching. We know who you are. You'll know who we are. Uh, over the four years that you, you come to Roger Williams, you'll learn all your professors' names. The professors will all know you. Uh, you're not gonna be able to hide in the back of a classroom, and you're not gonna be lost in a classroom of 250 people either. Our classrooms are small, 15 to 20 people, uh, and that's what allows us to really give you the, the type of education that we've become very proud of. Uh, I'm gonna be talking again about the computer science program. Uh, we're a traditional computer science program. Uh, we have a breadth of information we also have sufficient depth our students go out into industry uh, many of our students can uh, go directly into graduate school so again our program is oriented to meet both needs uh, we provide you the uh, depth of information to allow you to go directly to graduate school and we provide you the breadth of information so that you can get a job in the computing profession Right now, uh, we are in the high 90 percentage uh, rate of our students who are either in graduate school or are working in the industry within six months of graduation. So we think that's a, a pretty good sign of success of our program. Our program is accredited by uh, an organization called ABET. ABET accredits uh, engineering programs, computer science programs, and it's an international recognition. Right now, we are the only computer science bachelor's degree that is accredited by ABET within Rhode Island. Uh, as you're a student, you'll see that what that means. But basically, uh, what that means is you'll be able to take your degree from Roger Williams, you'll be able to take it to California, and because it is an ABET accredited program, those employers in California already know a lot about the material that you're familiar with. They don't have to call back to me and ask, hey, did this person study X? Did they study Y? Did they study C? Just by being accredited, uh, that information carries forward with you. So again, it's a it's a pretty big deal for a university, especially one of our size. Uh, when you look at our degree, this is the Bachelor of Science degree. Well, we actually have two. Uh, the Bachelor of Science degree is anywhere from 120 to 103 credit hours. But one of the things that you'll notice is if you look in the upper left-hand side, there are a minimum of, math, of five math courses. You'll be taking 18 credit hours of math, so there is a pretty significant math component to our program. We have two science courses. We have uh, 24 credits. We have uh, eight courses that are part of the University Common Core. Those are courses that everybody at the university is taking. And you'll have nine electives. And those electives are basically anything that you would want them to be. Now, the, the one thing that you'll, you'll notice if you look at the top line is out of 120 credit hours, about half 
are math, science, and humanities. So again, when you talk about computer science, and we'll see this later, it's more than just writing programs. There is a huge component that allows you to have the, the breadth of education that you need really to function in a multidisciplinary uh, global type environment. When you look at our courses now, we'll move over to the right side of the screen. Uh, we have some uh, courses that you would expect to see, introduction to programming, data structures, uh, some basic computer hardware courses, programming languages. Uh, we have a little bit of theory, a little bit of more uh, complex computing operating system compilers. We have uh, a senior design course that actually takes a full year. We'll talk a lot about that later, but the computer science uh, senior design course literally is a team working on a project for a full year. We have a networks class and we have one class on databases. So again, a lot of breadth, a lot of depth to that computer science program. It'll be about half the, uh, the courses that you'll take while you're at Roger Williams. Down the bottom, you'll see there's these courses called specialization electives. What we have is you have five electives within the computer science program. These are not free electives. These electives are allowing you to focus in an area that you would like, what becomes your specialization. We have a math, mathematics specialization for the people who like math. You could take all your math courses there. Uh, we do have students who dual major between computer science and mathematics. So again, you're, that's where your specialization courses will go. We have a specialization on human computer or human centered computing. These are things that allow computers to be part of your everyday life. There's a mobile applications class in there. There's a gaming class in there. Uh, there's a little bit of AI. There's a little bit of robotics a little bit of everything that says, yeah, this is part of what we see and what we deal with on a daily basis, not as a computer scientist, but just as a person operating uh, through their daily lives. We have a specialization on intelligent and autonomous systems, a class on uh, artificial intelligence, class on machine learning, some data analysis classes, that's the specialization we like to think of it in what allows self-driving cars to actually be self-driving. So we talk a little bit about that. We have a course on data science. Uh, this has data analysis course in it, some statistical courses in it, some uh, data collection, data manipulation courses. Basically what we call data science, the uh, slang for that that you've probably heard would be big data. Uh, how do we deal basically with more data that comes in than we can possibly store, that we can possibly deal with just by being people? Some people come in and they like the hardware. Uh, for those who like hardware, those who like electrical engineering, uh, we have digital systems. That's the hardware. Uh, we talk about computer science. Computer science we talk about in terms of programming but those programs have to run on something. Digital systems allows you to get into a lot more detail about the hardware that our computers run on. Then there's a sixth specialization right there on the top called custom. The custom specialization is really intended for the person who wants to try a little bit of everything. You don't wanna focus in uh, AI, you don't wanna focus in data science, but you want to take one or two courses from those. The uh, custom specialization is where you can go to take uh, a broader range of electives uh, basically suited to whatever it is that you're uh, interested in. For people who really want to get into network security, custom specialization gives you the opportunity to focus completely on network and cybersecurity courses. And you don't do this on your own. Uh, it's not like somebody is gonna send you an email that says, hey, pick your specialization. You'll meet with an advisor twice a year. 
And as you meet with your advisor, you'll talk about the courses that you're in. You'll talk about your goals. You'll talk about the things that you want to do both at Roger Williams and more importantly, once you leave Roger Williams. Based on those conversations, you and your advisor work together to pick a specialization. So again, uh, it's not as overwhelming as it sounds because by the time you pick it, you'll have two years of computer science under your belt. You'll know your advisor well, your advisor will know you well, and again, it's a, something that you obtain in a sort of a mutual agreement of what it is you want to specialize in. One of our newer programs is a Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science. The Bachelor of Arts is a, a standalone degree. It's, pretty, it's fairly new. It started in fall of 2018, so it's only a couple of years old. Uh, it doesn't have as much of the computer science courses in it. It has less math in it. But if you look at the lower right-hand corner, you'll see that you have 12 electives. The goal of the BA is really for those people who come to Roger Williams with two, with two passions. They want a dual major. They want to major in computer science, but they also want to major in something else. Uh, when you look at the Bachelor of Science, the Bachelor of Science is a pretty tight program. It's hard to dual major in a, with a Bachelor of Science. But if you want a dual major, the Bachelor of Arts gives you 12, credit, uh, 12 elective courses. With 12 elective courses, you can major in pretty much any other program on campus and still have a, uh, another major in computer science. So again, it's a, it's a unique opportunity. Uh, a lot of schools don't have two programs like this, but we know there are people who really love computer science, but also love something else. So this is the program for you if you're in that uh, position. One of the things we spend a lot of time in focusing on is uh, people come in and they think computer science is coding. Oh, we're gonna write big programs. We're gonna write a lot of programs. We're gonna just be coding constantly. That's not true. Yes, you do program. Uh, computer science is programming, but there's a lot more to the science to that. There's theory that we cover. There's the interaction of the software and the hardware that we cover. Most importantly, what we do as computer scientists is we solve problems. We solve problems for people. They have a need. We do our best to meet that need where the computer just happens to be our primary tool. But it's not just, oh, we woke up, let's start coding, bedtime, we, we code all day. It's not. You'll spend a lot of your time just trying to figure out what the problem is, a lot of your time trying to design a solution, and then spend part of your time doing the coding to make that solution work. But again, it's oriented on solving problems for people. The uh, entire program itself is oriented on projects. You will have projects from your first year course all the way through your senior, design, your senior uh, year. During your first year, you, pr you have two primary courses, uh, an introduction to programming where we use Java and data structures. With those two courses, you can do a significant amount of work right off the bat. Uh, when you look at the screen, this, uh, the, lower, the left hand side, looks like a Google search, uh, but it's not. What that is, is one of the projects at the end of your first semester was being able to write a small web browser that was able to search the Roger Williams website. So again, after just uh, one semester of coding, you're already capable of doing something as complex as making a web browser. On the uh, right-hand side of your screen, one of the other things you learn between the two courses is uh, 
coming up with, in this case, a, a student wrote a game. This game was uh, pretty fun to play, basically. Uh, what you're trying to do, if you're on the red side, you're trying to get a path that goes all the way from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. But at the same time, you're trying to make a path. You're trying to block the blue from doing the same thing. So again, it's a, it's a two-person game. Uh, it's pretty complex when you think about the rules, when you think about what the goals are. But again, after your first year experience, that is well within your skill set. Uh, moving beyond the first year, you take on more and more complex projects. The lower left-hand corner is, uh, was developed by a student in our game design course. So we, uh, a lot of students love that course. As you can imagine, it's a lot of fun. And what this course is, is again, it's two players, somebody driving the orange car, somebody driving the green car. And what you're doing is you're racing. But as the two cars are racing, the longer you race, the world starts getting skinnier. So as you're, uh, if you're ahead, you're fine. But if, there's, if you're next to that car, you have the potential of actually being pushed right off the edge of the game board. So again, it's a strategy. to so you try to go as fast as you can to stay ahead of your opponent or do you work at bumping your opponent off the edge of the map? So again, that's something that was done after, uh, I think this was in their third year of coding. The upper program is called Hebic. And what that was for is that was a project that was done for an external client. And what they did is, uh, we were doing something for a building preservation committee. And one of the problems with preserving old buildings is how much are they wasting energy wise? What's their energy use? So this, uh, this uh, code that they wrote, this program allows an inspector to put in information about a building, how many doors, how many windows, how old is it? Uh, what's its normal power consumption? It would go through a pretty complex algorithm and determine how much it would cost to renovate the building to make it uh, better conservation for heat and utilities, how much it would cost just to leave the building as is, or was the building so not cost effective that they should consider actually removing it? So, again, taking a lot of information that would take people weeks and months to calculate. This computer, uh, this computer program does it in a matter of the time it takes a person to walk through that building. So again, some pretty complex things being done by our students. Uh, when you move into your senior design, this is first and second semester of senior year. It's a two, core, it's a two semester project. You work in a team. Uh, it's the same team from uh, beginning all the way through the end. So you're with this team, three to five people for a full year. We try to get you external clients. Those clients may or may not know what it is that they actually want. So when we talk about computer science being problem solving and not just coding, it is highly encourage that students spend the first semester not trying to code the solution, but working with the client, find out what the actual requirements are, and then come December, have just wrapped up design. So getting a lot of work done without ever really doing any coding. This one problem here, this uh, senior design uh, was a small HVAC test. And if you ever wanted to have your house evaluated for uh, conservation, normally what will happen is the pe people come in, they kick you out for three days, they seal your house off, and they fill it with compressed air, and then they measure where the heat loss is. And wherever the air is escaping the house, that's where 
you're suffering heat loss. You can't be in your house for that. What this team did is they developed a series of sensors and instead of kicking you out of your house, they place seven or eight of these sensors all over the house. It records uh, data uh, wirelessly, sends it up to a web browser so that the person examining the house sees the data in real time, sees the data and sees what the impact is of actually living in the house. You want your house to conserve uh, energy, not when it's sealed off and uh, barricaded, but when you're actually living in it. The sensors that they used are in the lower left-hand corner. It's basically the size of a deck of cards. So you could put 10, 11 of these in a house to capture data uh, rather than kicking people out of their home for three days at a time. Uh, we had a, a group work for, with our physics department and working with our physics department, they developed a software system that simulated all the physics labs so that if you uh, did this simulation before class, you'd be better prepared to do the lab uh, when you were there. Or if for some reason you missed the lab, you would at least have a simulation of what was supposed to happen. Uh, this team went to a <clears throat> national simulation conference and they took second place. Uh, and the interesting thing about our team of three undergraduates is the team that won was somebody working on their PhD. So again, uh, very complex capabilities uh, you develop over your four years here at Roger Williams. Uh, this was a program based a little bit on Pokemon Go. What would happen is you would get flashcards randomly on your phone. Uh, there would be flashcards in chemistry, flashcards in Spanish, flashcards for history. Basically, you would put in a deck of flashcards that you wrote or that your teacher provided, and they would pop up at random over campus. And if you did more cards in more places on campus, you got more points. Uh, th this was based on a theory that if you learn information in multiple places, you're better able to retain it. So you would get these flashcards in the library. You would get them while you were eating in the commons. You would get them in your dorm. Uh, you would get them walking across campus between class. So again, just trying to get you to see and learn this material more than simply cramming before an exam. But there's things to do outside of campus as well. Uh, the school has a lot of clubs, a lot of different athletic teams. Uh, we have the hockey team here. Uh, the reason we picked the hockey team is Nick Hart, one of our uh, current juniors. He's one of the uh, stars on the hockey team. He was selected to play uh, in an international team in uh, Russia. So again, there are lots of things. Our Dean, Dean Potter, is one of the managers for the hockey team. So again, even the faculty and the staff get involved in sports. Uh, not only is Dean Potter uh, interact with students through the hockey team, but the Dean walks around our building, he walks in classes, so not only will your teachers know who you are, but by the end of your fourth year, the Dean will also know that you're a member of the School of Engineering. He may not know your exact program, but he will know that you're one of our students. So again, uh, the ability to really know your faculty, know the Dean, uh, you're just not gonna get that in very large schools and we take pride in it. You also have the opportunity to study overseas. For those who study overseas, we pick second semester junior year because that's the semester where you have the most electives. Uh, we've had students go to Australia. We've had students go to uh, Scotland. We've had students go to Ireland. We've had students go to England. So the opportunity to travel over, or 
to attend school for a semester overseas is there. Again, uh, we recognize how valuable those experiences could be. Uh, so we do everything we can to give you that opportunity as well. One of the things that's nice is our, build, our program is building. Our, our, our school, just the School of Engineering, just built a brand new building. And when I say brand new, I mean brand new. We start, we gave our first class in that building in January of 2020. So basically, this is the first semester using that building. It has labs for construction management. It has labs for engineering. It has one high performance computing lab and it has another high performance lab that is used predominantly by construction management, but that's where we teach our gaming course because it actually has a 24 TV screen. The screen literally is bigger than a wall. So again, a lot of new things happening. We have a very, very bright future. Uh, we think we have a great program. We have great facilities. We have a very bright future ahead of us. And we are hoping that you would be able to join us next semester and share your future being part of ours as well. At this time, I'll turn it over to Bill. Uh, and Bill, if you have questions, uh, I'll see how many I can answer. Okay, one second, I have to, I have to unmute. I, I got it. Okay. Um, so uh, just as a reminder, as students are looking to ask questions, we ask that you use the chat function. Again, you can just put your cursor right over uh, the, the picture of the university. At the bottom, you'll see uh, the chat uh, function is right next to share screen if you bring that up uh, and you'll have the ability to be able to type in your question. I know, I know that this always takes a good um, 30 or 40 seconds before we get the first one that comes up. So our, our first question comes from uh, Yimnai, which is, uh, what is the average, numbers, uh, average number of students per class? Okay, within computer science, uh, generally we would have 15 to 20. Uh, and I say 15 to 20 because the largest computer science class we have is actually 26. And that's our computer science lab and the only reason it has, and the reason it's capped at 26, that's how many desks there are, and we're not putting any more desks in there. And so, that, it, that extends well beyond computer science as well. The average uh, for all classes at Roger Williams is 19 uh, per class. So we pride ourselves on small class sizes. Uh, and as Dr. Ruko was saying, uh, the opportunity for, uh, faculty student interaction the faculty will definitely know who you are uh, during your time at the university um, and I see Dean Potter all the time I see Dean Potter at lunch all the time in the comments seems that he and I have a similar schedule that way uh, thank you for that question we have another question coming from Benjamin I was wondering would we be specializing in a certain programming language or exploring different ones as well okay uh Benjamin, that's a great question. When I said that what we do as computer scientists is we're problem solvers with the computer as our tool, programming languages themselves are tools. Now for freshman year, for your first two semesters, we use Java. And uh, so all your programming first year, all your programming uh, is going to be in Java. After that, you'll get introduced, you'll see a little bit of Python, you'll see a little bit of C, uh, you'll see other languages, because by the time you graduate, and this is really important to the people who hire our graduates, you recognize that different languages do well in certain circumstances. So once you understand the problem, 
you understand which programming language is the best tool to solve that problem. So other than freshman year, you're not going to be locked in to a programming language. Thank you, Benjamin, for that question. Uh, the next question is actually, I suppose, not a question at all. I came into this presentation, Tyler says, with a bunch of questions, but you ended up answering them all during the presentation. Thank you. That's what we're here for. <laughs> uh, and again, uh, if you go to the Roger Williams website and you go to the computer science program, uh, you'll see my name is there as the point of contact. If you have any questions, just email me and I'll be glad to answer as many as I can. We do have two more questions that have come in. Uh, Benjamin, you've got a great question here again. How would IBHL computer science play a role in the sense of, of credits towards a computer science major? Uh, Dr. Rucco, are you familiar with the International Baccalaureate high, uh, high level computer science class? I, I'm not familiar specifically with that course. However, we do have uh, an understanding with the International Baccalaureate, uh, Baccalaureate Program that if you come in uh, at certain levels, you can get credit for some of the courses. Normally, the, the credits that you would be looking at is uh, credits for our first two programming courses, Computer Science 110, which is uh, Introduction to Programming, and our second course, which is data structures. But again, without knowing uh, very specific details, I can't give you a blanket answer other than we do recognize the IB and we already have in place the ability to, uh, to deal with that. That would actually be done through admissions and the registration and the registrar as part of your enrollment. Absolutely, and, and in my experience, um, you know, we place a very high value on um, students who have gone through the IB program. And uh, just as a note for all of the participants here today, uh, just last week I uh, was on a similar type of conference call uh, globally with a lot of my colleagues as uh, given the situation that we're all in right now, I know that IB testing is, uh, especially with the, the, the final test this year is going to be very different from how it's been in the past. Same for anybody who's in an AP system, or if anybody is also studying in um, the A level currently. The university is committed to being as flexible as possible, knowing that all of this is out of your control as a student. We ask that you do your best, uh, given the uh, changing landscape uh, throughout this final semester that you're all in right now, uh, and know that we will be working with you and the testing organizations as closely as possible to make sure that you're getting the optimum amount of transfer uh, credit given this course as they come in. Um, we do have an additional couple of questions now. It's, uh, is it necessary to have prior knowledge in any subject before the start of the semester? Uh, computer science wise, no. That would be my, that would be my guess. Yeah, uh, no. You don't need any background in computer science at all. You don't need any background in programming coming into the courses either. Uh, in fact, you're probably, I, I don't wanna say you're better off not having any background, but if you come in and have never programmed before, that means there's no bad habits for us to have to break. <laughs> Most people who come in with programming experience knock out code, they pound out code, uh, and there's a huge difference between having software that's well designed and just having a bunch of code that happens to work. So again, no, no background needed at all. Now, I'm not sure how it's gonna work this summer because again, it's rather unique year. Over the summer, Everyone who comes into the School of Engineering and Computing and Computer uh, Construction Management is asked to take a math exam. All I could say is do your absolute best on that math exam because the math exam is going to indicate where you start in the math program. Uh, and again, if you have no math experience, we can deal with that. 
but it's better knowing that up front rather than showing up the first day of school and realizing that you don't have the math background to be in some of the courses that we would normally automatically place you in. I know from working with Dean Potter, the recommendation is for students coming into the program to at least have uh, elements of, of pre-calculus as you're coming in. Um, for international students, I know you're looking at general maths as um, you know, for most of the curriculums around the world. Uh, with an ability to have at least had a little bit of pre-calculus as you're coming in is going to give you a leg up as you're getting started, especially when it comes to taking the, the placement test as you arrive on campus. I think our, our uh, last question is, again, not really a question at all. It comes from uh, Trisha Patel, uh, who just wants to thank you very much. She's, she, uh, she's got to run. She's got a school meeting that she's attending, but uh, thanks for answering uh, her questions throughout the presentation. Well, uh, thank you for coming. I, I know there's a lot of things going on at home. I know there's a lot of things that you're still trying to keep up with in school. So giving us an hour today is really appreciated at our end as well. Wonderful. And I know that we've got uh, students from uh, different time zones as well as uh, at least one international student who's here is checking in from, uh, from Africa. So um, if, uh, if that's all, I'm gonna um, just, uh, quickly sign off here. If anybody else has any questions, um, feel free to type them in. Uh, we would love to have you visit the campus when you have the opportunity. I know some of you have already made your commitment uh, to coming and joining us as a part of the Roger Williams community uh, in August. Uh, because of the current situation, we've actually relaxed our um, our deposit deadline. Typically, we would ask uh, you to make your deposit if you're interested in attending uh, by May 1st, but because of the current uh, set of circumstances, we have pushed that back to June 1st to allow you to um, do the research that you need to do, be a part of these virtual presentations, not just with Roger Williams, but with any other university that you may be looking at. Um, because we realize it's, it's going to be more difficult for you to be able to do that without having the opportunity to physically visit a lot of campuses. So uh, know that, you know, we would love to see you coming up in August for the start of classes, but you do have some extra time to be able to make that determination so that uh, as you make this, which realistically is likely going to be the second largest uh, investment that you make in your lifetime next to buying and purchasing a home, um, as you make investment in your education, that you have the proper time to be able to do so. It looks like we've got all of our questions answered at this particular point in time. Um, I want to thank everybody for participating here today. Uh, Dr. Ruko, thank you for your time here as well. And as we uh, prepare to sign off, I know uh, you and I are going to have to switch back on our host duties, uh, but I uh, you know, want to say thank you to all of our students. Then you are excused. You can actually check out of the presentation. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, I believe if you just go to my window and click on the ellipsis, you should be able to hand me back the host duties. Okay. Well, I still have our, our students. I just want them to know that this is a tough decision in the best of times. Give it as much consideration as you can. I truly hope you consider Roger Williams favorably as you make your decisions. Uh, but no matter what, how you decide, all I want is leave this parting note. We were able to do this today because of the work of computer scientists who have come before you. So you can be part of a profession that literally is allowing the world to function at a time when it might otherwise be at a standstill.